Good morning and happy Sunday to you. It is May the 24th, Ascension Sunday. It is a pleasure to be with all of you this morning. I hope that this recording finds you all doing quite well, that you are feeling well, and that you are happy, and that you are in a good and peaceful place to worship the Lord today. We do have a few announcements, the same as in the weeks before. Um, well, one slightly new one. Following the May 20th uh, Presbyterian Trumpet, uh, the weekly newsletter that we've been doing, uh, we will go back to doing a monthly newsletter. And so look out for the June newsletter, uh, which will be in the first week of June. If you have anything that you would like to have put into the June newsletter, please uh, contact Remia by noon on May the 25th and uh, she can make sure that whatever you need uh, in there gets in there. Uh, we are working on the church directory online, the digital version. If you uh, have not yet done so, please try to contact Jennifer Wilson. Um, you can either reach her by email or phone, uh, both of which are in the bulletin. Um, and she will need uh, a current photo and contact information for you if you wish to be in the church's digital directory. We will be, of course, restarting worship on June the 7th uh, here um, in the sanctuary. We're going to have some social distancing practices in place for everyone. Uh, we ask that you please review over those, and uh, we ask that you please join in with them. Uh, that's for the protection of everyone, uh, especially our more vulnerable members who will be attending. And uh, it is a way of us being in solidarity with one another in Christian community. Uh, if you have any prayer requests that you would like to send me, please do so at my email, pastorandy.seguin at gmail.com. I take all prayer requests. If you would like me to share them with the wider congregation, please say so in the body of the email so that I can have permission to share something. Otherwise, I will take it as confidential. Uh, another quick announcement regarding worship today and all other days until we're back together. If you wish to, uh, to mail in your offering, you may do so uh, to our P.O. Box. That's going to be uh, mailed to First Presbyterian Church at P.O. Box 870, Seguin, Texas, 78156. Not 78155, but 78156. Again, that's P.O. Box 870, Seguin, Texas, 78156. Without further ado, let us begin our worship of God on this Ascension Sunday by saying together our call to worship, which is printed in your bulletins. Jesus promised a new day has begun. Hope wins. A fresh start is granted. Faith wins. Today, you have the opportunity to do something new. Hope wins. Christ is entering your life in a new way. Faith wins. Come, let us worship God who is inviting us into life in a new way. A new way that transcends death. A new way of hope and faith. Love wins. Let us worship Christ who, over who overcame death to give us new life. Let us join in our daily prayer. Jesus Christ, mediator and high priest, we thank you for becoming human and for experiencing the joys and sorrows of life, which assures us that you are able to sympathize and rejoice with us. We praise you for the many joys of life, for the beauty of creation, for your work in this world, for the growth of your kingdom. For the greatest source of our happiness, the gift of eternal life. As our mediator, you stand before God, petitioning him on our behalf. So we boldly bring before you our prayers for creation and its care, for the nations of the world, for our nation and its leaders, for this community and those in authority, for the church universal as it works on your behalf for the local church and its ministry, for persons with particular needs. We pray this in your strong name, O Christ, our mediator and high priest. Amen. Friends, let us stand wherever we may be, either in body or spirit, and join in singing hymn number 273, He is King of Kings.
if we say within ourselves that we do not have sin, then scripture tells us that we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But we are a redeemed people and we need not fear to confess our sins now before God and before one another. While we claim to celebrate the ascension of our Lord the way we live proclaims our lack of faith in his power to deal with the world. Therefore, let us confess the incongruity between our faith and practice. Let us pray. We come, O Lord, on this day of glory to confess our lack of trust while we sing of your lordship over all creation. We have too often acted as though you are powerless in the face of today's events. Help us to live with confidence in your presence today and in hope for life with you forever. Amen. Dear children, if anyone among you sins, remember that you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is righteous. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only ours, but also for the sins of the entire world. Rest in the sure and certain knowledge of your redemption, and be filled with joy. He is risen. He is ascended to heaven. Alleluia. Glory to God.
brothers and sisters, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand, this same power is at work in each one of us who believe because he reigns, we are able to live in peace with God and with one another. Peace be with you. And also with you. I would like, uh, you know, Ainsley is on a much needed vacation this week. Um, you know, I'm sure she's having a great time wherever she may be, uh, hunting down dinosaurs to put unicorn horns on their heads and whatnot. Uh, so we have two very special guests this morning, uh, two children from this church that maybe you've not met before. Uh, we would like to invite down Christina. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. She, she, has, she has a lot of bravado um, and uh, likes a fanfare, folks. And we would also like to invite down uh, one Lindsay. Uh -huh. Well, good morning, Christina and Lindsay. How are you both today? Great. Great. You're doing great? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, now, let me ask you, uh, which grade are both of you in? Uh, I'm in fourth grade. You're in fourth grade? Four, okay. 45, grade 45. Grade 45. Grade or something, like a really high grade. That's like a really high grade, 45th grade. Yeah. No, I'm probably like in my 60s. <laughs> You're in your 60s at this point. Uh, okay. Um, okay. All right. Well, uh, so can, can either of you tell me what is today? It's a special day in the church. Oh, um, it's Tuesday. Yeah, I that much. Tuesday. That, yeah. No. Uh, it's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. 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 It's Sunday. It's Ascension. Yes. It's Ascension. Yes. What is it? What is Ascension? What does that mean? To ascend means to rise. Means to rise. It means to rise up. Okay. So when we say we go up a mountain, we ascend the mountain. Um, I can't think of any other uses that we have in the common language, uh, except in British law for some reason. But that's not. The best topic for kids? Send up a scale. Yeah, send up a scale or an escalator. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Elevator yeah. is ascending. Elevator. Yeah. Elevator is ascending. Yeah. Uh, so yes, those are some ways to ascend. Ascending means to go up. When we say we celebrate Ascension Sunday, whose ascension are we talking about? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, Jesus is the answer. Yes, Jesus did ascend. Uh, so that means that Jesus did what? He went up into the sky, right? He went to heaven. He went to heaven. Okay, okay. So why do we celebrate that? Because uh, he promised that we could go there too. Because he, he promised yeah. that we could go there too? Okay. Well, you know, it's a really weird story in the Bible. Um, it, it's kind of funny if you think about it. I'm going to talk a little bit about this later. But, you know, he's just on the Temple Mount with his disciples He's been hanging out with them for 40 days now. He's been raised from the dead. It's all great and Lots cool. Of Lots of things have happened. And, uh, and he's just talking to them, and he's giving them the Great Commission. Do you all remember what the Great Commission is? Or one of them, because there's different ones. To go out into all the world, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to make disciples. That's, that's the Great Commission. And uh, he, so he's saying this to them. And, you know, those disciples, they're not the smartest people in the world. They kind of, they're like a broken record. They ask the same question over and over again, you know? Yeah. I mean, we don't deal with anyone like that today. And, um, <laughs> and they said, yeah, okay, Jesus, that's all well and good and all. But um, this whole kingdom thing, right? We've been talking about this kingdom thing a while, and we thought that maybe now you would decide to just be a king and wipe everyone out and make all of us really rich and powerful. Is there any chance that that could happen, Jesus? And you know what happens? It's so funny. It's a really funny scene. Jesus starts answering them. But I, my assumption is that he's just had enough of it because all of a sudden he ascends and he's gone. <laughs> it literally is like in mid-sentence. 
in the Bible. It says like he, he is still speaking. It says as he is still speaking, he just like poof, he's gone. But God didn't want him to give the answers. I, well, I think that Jesus just like, I think Jesus is like, okay, guys, I'm, I'm, done. I'm done. Bye. <laughs> you know, I got, I got tea time here in a bit. You know, it's a really kind of funny image. And uh, you have all the disciples are like looking up at the sky just for a moment, like, what is, what just happened? They're all looking up at the sky, and all of a sudden, what do you think happens next? Any guesses? Minor, be good. <laughs> Boom, angels. Okay, you got two angels appearing. And uh, the angels look at them and like, why are y'all looking up at the sky? It's the, it's the weirdest question for angels to ask. But you know what's even weirder about it? They are so distracted by looking up at the, in the sky that they don't even seem to care that angels just appeared in front of them. They don't react to them at all, hardly. It, it's really funny. They're just so, like, like we're, he went up into the clouds. Can't you see that that's what we're watching? Uh oh, angels, hi, you know? And they say, they tell him, they tell them what Jesus has already told them which is that an advocate is coming for you. You're not going to be left alone an orphan. You just need to wait a little bit. Go to Galilee. Chill out. You know, take a staycation. Okay? Like what Ainsley's doing. And rest, and you will receive an advocate. And uh, do you think that they uh, were really good at following those orders? Do you think that they just went and rested and just chilled out and they weren't worried at all? No. They kind of freaked out again. They locked themselves back into a house again. You know, because that's what they do. They've already done it at this point twice. So this is number three of them locking themselves in a house because they're scared. And they wait for the day of Pentecost, the whole, when the Holy Spirit comes. And what's really cool is that when the Holy Spirit comes, they, the disciples change entirely. One, they get a new title. They're no longer called just disciples. They're called apostles. And that shows that there's a big change in their identity. No longer are they just these weirdos asking, so can we, can we become rich yet, Jesus? Can I have a palace and lots of pretty horses and stuff? They're no longer doing that, okay? They're no longer focused on themselves. Instead, they're focused on the actual kingdom. And they go out and they begin to preach the word and evangelize the faith. And they are forever changed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we believe that we are too. And how do we receive, when, how do we receive the Holy Spirit in Christianity? How do we, how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Do you all know? Uh, it, 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 comes, it comes before that, maybe. Baptism. Baptism. In baptism, we receive the Holy, the Holy Spirit as a sign and seal upon our lives. And that gives us the power to live into the calling that Christ calls us for, towards. We're able to become his disciples and follow him because we have the Holy Spirit to help us. The Holy Spirit is our friend, like we talked about last week. And so the Holy Spirit is super important, okay? And uh, when we are baptized, we are welcomed into the family of the church and the Holy Spirit enters our lives and lives within us. And so we actually have a piece of God that lives inside each of us, which is pretty cool. I don't know about y'all, but I think it's pretty cool. Do you, do you all think it's pretty cool? It's pretty cool. Now, do we have any prayer requests today? Amazon Rainforest. Amazon Rainforest. What else? All the animals. All the animals. Okay. I heard some stuff about tigers and stuff that the Tiger King. Tigers. Tigers and lemurs. People healthy and not healthy. People healthy and not healthy. Okay. What else? What else should we pray for? Um, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. I'm, sure. I'm going to say family members who are sick of each other. Oh, yes. Mending. People <laughs> struggling <laughs> with quarantine. Yeah. Close People, families yeah. struggling during times of quarantine. Absolutely. Yes. So in all seriousness, that is something that is... Very yes, something very that is something to absolutely to absolutely pray for mm -hmm. uh, our relationships mm -hmm. during this time when relationships are very much tested. Um, so, can we think of anything else that we need to pray for? We got animals, Amazon, tigers, Tiger King. The Amazon jungle, not 
Not rainforest, but jungle. Jeff Bezos. Okay. I'm sure he is. I, though I, you yeah. know, I, I would like, I would like them to get their shipping times back under control. That'd be great. Can we, pray for that? we can pray for the Amazon rainforest. We can also pray for Amazon to get their shipping times get some back to normal. Cheaper. Toilet paper would be nice. Yes. I pray that I pay that prime fee monthly. I expect good service. <laughs> okay. Do y'all want to do a repeat after me prayer? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Remind me how to do that again. Okay, we'll close our eyes. Is that the first step? Okay. Now what? Okay. Yeah, it's very official. Okay. Very official. Put our hands together and we do a repeat after me prayer. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for ascending to the Father. Thank you for ascending to the Father. And creating a place for us. Creating a place for us. In your kingdom. In your kingdom. And filling us with the Holy Spirit. And filling us with the Holy Spirit. Our advocate. Our and our friend. And our friend. God, God, be with dinosaurs. Be with dinosaurs. And the Amazon rainforest. And the Amazon rainforest. And all the animals. And all the animals. And all people. And all people. Healthy or not. Healthy or not. And uh, families. And families. Who are struggling right now. Who are struggling right now. Help them find peace. Help them find peace. And God, be with all the people in this church. And God be with all the people of this church. And in this world. And in this world. Especially. Especially. Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> but be with all be with all people uh, of power, God, and all people of influence. That was a long one. Sorry. Be with all people of power. Power, people of power and, and influence. influence. Yes. That they may work for the better of all of us. Yes. Amen to that. That they may work for the betterment of all of us and of our world. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm sorry for the lack of reverence with throwing Jeff Bezos in there. I just I thought it was hilarious. So uh, we can pray for we can pray for Jeff Bezos. You know, nothing wrong with that. Well there's a lot of workers too Yes, oh, yes. <laughs> Especially we pray for them. I would like to thank our younger members, Christina and Lindsay. We gotta get that piano checked out. It's just key. I don't know what <laughs> my friends our Psalter reading this morning comes to us from Psalm ninety three. Should you wish to follow along with me, you may do so in your bulletins uh, where the full text is printed. Let us together listen for God's word. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring more majestic than the thunders of mighty waters, more majestic than the waves of the sea, majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. And now a reading from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when you had come together, they, so, pardon me, so when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set 
by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, they were gazing up toward heaven. Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand there looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us stand as we are able. What is the correct number? 662. Hymn number 662. Christ whose glory fills the sky. to us from the gospel according to Luke chapter 24 verses 44 through 53 let us together listen for God's word then he said to them these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city, until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you, O oh Lord, are eternal and our rock and our salvation. Amen. Pastors, like to joke that there are two particular passages 
from the Gospels or the Book of Acts in one of the cases, both of which the church calendar dedicates special days to, that are some of our least favorite to preach on. One of these passages is the story of the Transfiguration when the disciples encountered Jesus along with Moses and the prophet Elijah atop a mountain, all three of them shrouded with heavenly glory. The other just so happens to be today's passage from the book of Acts and Luke, which tells the story of the Ascension. Now, usually it's very difficult to preach on either of these passages because so often pastors may find themselves repeating the point of these stories over and over, and we sometimes struggle to present the, them their importance in fresh or creative ways. Despite all of this, I do think that this passage is incredibly important to the Christian story. It is the last time that Christ is visually seen by the disciples. And although we have stories in which Paul and John both encounter him in visions, this is the last moment that the disciples actually share with him in person. At one time, both the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts were in fact one book. But it was so large that early church scholars chose to split it up in order to make it easier for them to study. And so they divided it up between the first half that mostly dealt with the life of Jesus and the one which mostly dealt with the early history of the church. And so when we read this passage, which comes at the beginning of Acts, we should read it as a continuation of what just took place in the Gospel of Luke. And what just took place was the Gospel of Luke's version of Jesus giving the Great Commission. Uh, you are, most people are more familiar with the version that's in Matthew, in which he tells the disciples that they are to be witnesses of his resurrection to the end of the world. Now in both Acts and Luke, we see that the disciples are continuing to struggle with this concept of Jesus' kingdom. They immediately ask him, Again, as they had done dozens of times before, if he was finally going to restore earthly Israel. They had heard him say time and time again, now that his kingdom is not of this world, that he is not a ruler like their earthly rulers. They had seen him crucified by those very earthly rulers. They had seen the crowds turn their back on him, calling for the release of a convicted murderer instead of the release of the man they hailed as the king of the Jews. The disciples had been a part of all of these events, and yet they still expected and desired that Jesus would rise to earthly power and that they would have a seat at the table of his kingship. Princes and lords with domains and power and wealth to wield, they still did not get it. Or I think it is perhaps more likely that they still did not want to get it. Because if the ends of the kingdom of Jesus look like the cross and not like a palace, then their trepidation is perhaps a little bit understandable. Jesus gently rebukes them, telling them that it is not for them to know God's timetable for restoring things, calling them instead to stay focused on the task at hand. He promises them yet again that they would receive in due time an advocate. Now remember last Sunday we spoke about the passage in which Jesus encourages his disciples and us as well that they would not be abandoned as, as, abandoned as orphans, but that they would receive their advocate, their helper, the one who would be next to them throughout all this trouble, thick and thin. Now, Scripture is interesting here in the book of Acts. Um, and it's not necessarily very obvious with the way it's translated in, into English, but there is this way of speaking in Greek. Uh, the term is called speaking in uh, aorist, it was spelled A-O-R-I-S-T, which is a way of saying that an action is almost done, but not quite finished. Okay, So when you speak in aorist, you would say a word in a certain way that would communicate that something is not quite finished. Now, in 
our translation of Acts, it says something along the lines of after he was saying, after he said these things, or as he completed these, th as he finished saying these things, and that's actually not quite accurate, because the word there for Jesus speaking is aorist, which means Scripture tells us that it is as he says these things, not after, but while he is speaking to them, that he ascends into the clouds and is gone. In some of the pictures and the paintings that we see of the ascension, many artists have sought to capture it as a moment of incredible glory and rapture. Jesus rising to the sky, beaming with blinding light, the onlooking disciples looking on with absolute awe and dumbfoundedness. It's quite an inspiring scene, for certain, but if we read the story in Scripture carefully, we notice that it really was a lot more ambiguous than what we have been led to believe. Because instead of being caught up in a moment of otherworldly rapture, Acts would have us believe that Jesus left mid-sentence with a group of confused disciples staring up, questioningly at the sky, wondering what in the world just happened. Now, I cannot help but picture it somewhat comically in my head. Jesus was just talking to them, explaining to them for the thousandth time that he was not interested in the type of power that they wanted, and that their job was to simply carry this message of love and resurrection into the world, and in the midst of him giving them this final lesson, he's gone. Just gone. No warning, no lights or sudden sounds, no pomp and circumstance of angelic choirs singing. He is just gone. And they are stuck there, stupefied, staring up into a cloudless sky. And I imagine that I would wonder if it was all some kind of a dream, some beautiful and sometimes even terrifying creation of my mind that any minute now I might wake up from back into a life of safety predictability and relative comfort, but it is not so. Suddenly cutting the tension like a knife. A harmony of two voices rise forth from the miasma of confusion. Men of Galilee, why are you staring at the sky? In a scene very reminiscent of the two angels meeting Mary Magdalene at the tomb asking, Woman, why are you crying? Two angels stand among the disciples, appearing as quickly as their heavenly master departed. What is especially interesting about this instance of angels appearing to the disciples is that it actually doesn't seem to phase them at all. Throughout Scripture, when people encounter angels, they often do so in a state of absolute terror and awe. Angels often have to tell their, the people object of their message, not to be afraid. Here, the disciples, their eyes focused intensely upon the sky, offer very little in the way of a reaction to the obvious presence of the heavenly beings next to them. Have you ever met someone that fits this description? That some people are so heavenly minded that they are of no earthly good? That's, uh, that was a new one for me this week. I had not heard that one before. But it, I, I get the sense that, that that's kind of how the disciples were in this moment. That they were so focused on looking back at the sky, that their minds were so focused on looking for the big miracles, the big signs, the big answers, the big booming voice from God or the choirs of angels singing, or the big miraculous sign that they were so caught up in, in looking for those things that their minds and their hearts simply would not even allow them to listen to the simple message that their Lord had given them. That they were to go into the world 
baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and making disciples, and showing his love to others. And you see, I think a lot of the time, we get it wrong in a very similar way. How often is faith about trying to ascend to some grand, miraculous idea, make some big claim, wait for some big miracle to happen. Meanwhile, little miracles happen all the day around us, and we don't pay attention to those because we are so caught up looking into the sky, waiting for the big one, that we miss everything around us. We miss out on the point of faith. Because faith is supposed to change who we are. That's what the Spirit does. It comes into our lives and it shapes us and it sanctifies us. It creates in us a holy heart. We are changed and we are then able to live out this mission that Christ gives us, this great commission. Meaning that we are in mission with Jesus. That's what commission means. Faith is not about waiting for a huge sign. It's not about looking for a, a, a huge, miraculous thing. I believe in miracles. I will be the first to say that. I believe God's power is real. I believe in the resurrection. But faith, what I am called to do today in the 21st century as a follower of Jesus Christ, is to live out that Great Commission. That's what each of us is called to live our faith out That is the point of the Christian life. Not to be a sky starer, but to be one who then turns back, looking back down to the earth and says, let's get going. Let's go back to Jerusalem. We have some work to do. Because the truth is, is that Christ is with us. Just because Christ is in heaven does not mean that we are any less his disciples as these folks were. We follow Christ. Christ teaches us, and we, are com and we are called and committed to a life of faith as well. So stop staring up at the sky. Look around you, for there is much work to be done. Amen. Joining together as God's people in prayer, let us pray this prayer of the people together. You are free, Lord. Your ascension has set you free. Free from the constraints of human existence, outside the limitations of time and space, free to be here with us now in our worship and our fellowship, and free to be with us always, for in your freedom, you have bound yourself to us with a promise. Lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of time. We pray, Lord, for those who need to feel you close, who need the assurance of your love and the encouragement of your spirit. We pray for those who are persecuted, who are discriminated against, who are mocked because of their faith or their race or their color. We pray for those who are imprisoned, who are tortured, who are exiled because they have fought, struggled, and spoken out for the rights of their own people. We pray for those who are destitute, who are hungry, who are refugees because of the selfishness and the apathy of the world. We pray, Lord, for those who are filled with guilt, who are brokenhearted, who are perplexed, because a relationship has gone wrong. We pray for those 
this day who are feeling fed up, who are in discomfort, who are afraid because they are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who are numbed, who are angry, who are desolate because they have been bereaved. We pray for those caught up in war, in violence, in hatred, especially the innocent victims of these evils. God, we pray at this time of financial turmoil for those who have lost their jobs, those who struggle to pay bills, and for those in our world who have the power to effect positive change. Be with us all, dear Lord, in our, all of our daily struggles as we seek to follow you. Be with us all, Lord, in our periods of doubt and despair and in our times of happiness, health, and loving. Be with us all, Lord, until that time when your kingdom of love, our joy, will know no end. And until that time, may we pray continually the prayer you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As God's people and as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are called to give our all, all of our gifts and talents and all of ourselves to the kingdom of God. May we, as God's children, make our offering together. this offering prayer together. We offer these gifts to you, Ascended One. May they expand your kingdom in the hearts of all people. May they lift up the oppressed, bandage the bruised and hurting, feed the starving, clothe the cold, and give rest to the weary. This we do in allegiance to your kingdom. Amen. Christ is risen and has arisen to the skies. And yet Christ still dwells here on earth within each of you. So therefore do not look to the skies for Christ. Look in the world around you. Look within yourself. Look to the mission to make disciples of all nations, to love and serve others and to do good any way we can, as long as we can, forever and ever. May you go forth from wherever you may be in life. May the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon you now this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>